Yes, uh, nearest to the rectum. They're going to put their name tags up now. It's slides, not a video. Hello and a very warm welcome to everyone. This is the publication of this year's Climate Change Performance Index and uh, actually it's the 19th edition of the Climate Change Performance Index and we are very happy that we can present the CCPI again here at COP. My name is Thea Ulich. I'm co-author of the CCPI and together with me on the panel today are my co-authors Niklas Höhne from New Climate Institute Jan Burg from German Watch, as well as Janet Milongo from the Climate Action Network International. And before I hand over to my colleagues, let me say a few brief words on the CCPI. So we published the index since 2005, and it's an instrument to enhance transparency in climate politics. And the index compares the climate mitigation efforts of 63 countries and the EU, covering over 90% of greenhouse gas emissions. And I will hand over to Niklas, and he explains us how this works. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Niklas Hoene, New Climate Institute. And it's uh, indeed great to uh, be part of uh, this endeavor of the Climate Change Performance Index now for the 19th time. It's incredible that we uh, do it so long. And what we are doing here is we rate uh, 63 countries plus the EU on their climate performance. And I think the unique thing about this uh, um, index is that it's many countries, 63 plus EU, and that we look at the past performance, uh, the current status, and how they will develop in the future. And that is a very comprehensive picture. And not only that, we also look at greenhouse gas emissions, which is the most important element of it. Uh, we look at uh, renewable energy, how that is progressing, energy use. And one element that is also unique is the climate policy evaluation. We have uh, experts around the world, 450 experts participate in the survey uh, to rate the climate policy of the countries, the domestic and the international climate policy. And with that, we have a very comprehensive uh, data set. If we click on the next slide, you can see how it is weighted. So each of these four categories look at the uh, current level uh, where we are, uh, they look at the trend, what happened in the past, they look at uh, what is going to happen in the future compared uh, to the targets that the different countries are setting. And targets is a good thing. Uh, here at the UNFCCC, countries are setting targets, the NDCs, so that is also something that is very important and whenever a country updates its NDC, it will come up, uh, it will have an impact positively on the rating. Um, the we, before we come to the results, I just want to say one word about the overall picture. And the main message is basically, um, although there has been some positive improvements, in particular on renewable energy, we see that these 63 countries have only barely moved closer to the Paris Agreement goals. And that is actually worrying because we are so late in climate policy that from now on we need to see each year a significant step forward in climate policy making. Each year a significant step forward is necessary and that's currently what we have not seen. We've seen a bit that policies have been stagnated and that is not a good sign. With that I hand over back to Jan, I think. Thank you, Niklas. And now I would like to present you the, this year's ranking results of the Climate Change Performance Index. Um, some of you know already the index, and you might know that we check every year whether one of our 63 countries is on track to prevent dangerous climate change. Um, and we see, uh, again, no country is on track to prevent dangerous climate change. No country is on track um, altogether um, to uh, do enough uh, for the 1.5 threshold. So the first three ranks are still not occupied. 
Within the categories, we can, for example, give to Norway um, uh, in a renewables category and a higher ranking on place three, but all the other countries, especially also in the policy section, as Niklas mentioned, are not doing um, good enough. Um, uh, mainly also be, we do that now since 19 years, and um, I was there from the first, from the beginning on, and well, if the countries would have act uh, better than now, we maybe uh, would have first three rank occupied. Let me start with uh, the first three ranks done. Rank four, five, and six is occupied from Denmark. Like, like last year, Estonia climbed up uh, quite well, and the Philippines. Um, and uh, Janet will bit, tell you a bit more about Denmark later. India is an interesting uh, country on rank seven, one, up, one rank up this year. Uh, India is still profiting from very low per capita emissions. The um, emissions trends are, are, are negative, so the, the, the emissions are going up, but not as much as in other countries. Um, India set a relatively ambitious target and is developing uh, renewables more than others. Uh, this is a rel relative exercise, so even the countries in the front has no reason to lean back. That's clear. Um, we have a mix, mixed picture in the high-ranked countries between European and some developing countries, like Philippines, India, Chile, um, are, are the, are you can find there. If you go a big, bit back in the ranking, um, especially from interest is uh, this year, UK. UK is for the first time since we do that um, not a high ranked country anymore. They slipped down nine ranks, um, so we clearly see a rollback in the policy in the UK. Um, Premier Zunak really um, pushed, uh, pushed uh, climate policy away from the agenda. And um, what is really uh, uh, mind blowing for us is that uh, there will be a new coal mine in the, in the UK, um, which in this time is really not what what should like, and this is reflected in the policy evaluation. Um, we will hear a bit more about one of the winners, which is Brazil, this year. So we will hear about Brazil a bit later. And before I give um, the floor to Thea, I would focus on on the end of the ranking. We see a lot of. Um, fossil fuel countries, um, fossil fuel based countries here, the last three countries are Saudi Arabia, Iran, and United Arab Emirates. A few words for uh, the United Arab Emirates is one of the new countries we have, besides Nigeria, Uzbekistan, and Pakistan. Uh, UAE uh, shows um, despite the fact that it has one of the highest per capita emissions in the index, has a below 1% share of renewables in the energy mix, shows at least some positive uh, developments in the, in the past, in the past one to two, to two years. We see um, more renewables coming up, um, which is not reflected in the, in the data yet. And um, we see that UAE is at least trying to um, diversify their economy, which then um, might lead, if this will reduce this high per capita emissions of nearly 26 tons per capita, might lead to better ranking next year. With this, I would love to give to Thea and tell, a bit, tell us a bit more about the policy evaluation. Yeah, we've seen this year there's no country received a high or a very high rating in the climate policy category. And for us, this is a sign that climate policy stagnated in the last year. And even the former front runner country in this category, Denmark, um, was not able to build on their developments and is also in this year a medium performing country. So the climate policy section is conducted with the support of over 450 experts, like Nicholas already explained, um, and they assess the climate policy in their countries. So we can include the most recent policy developments in our index. 
And although the category is only weighted with 20%, it has quite an impact on the overall ranking, um, as we can see in the following two examples. Um, Brazil raised 15 spots in this year's edition in the overall ranking, mainly due to its better performance in the um, climate policy category. Um, the new president, Lula, who took uh, office, uh, into office this year, uh, last year, I took back several of the problematic um, policies from the former President Bolsonaro, and especially the forestation plans and the acceleration of um, renewable energies are very positively um, assessed by our experts. And on the contrary, um, I think Jan explained it already, is the UK where the uh, rollback of the climate legislation um, lead to a fallback um, in the ranking, also mainly due to the climate um, policy rating here. So overall, we can see that the topic of climate policy is on the agenda of a lot of countries, which is very good, but we see as well that the ambition and implementation gap is still too big. So governments need to build on their efforts and raise their ambitions um, to keep 1.5 in reach. And now I will hand over to Janet with hopefully a little bit more of uh, positive news. So the CCPI tells a story that we have had several times before, including from previous uh, issues, and you've had, this has been going on for 19 years now. Um, it shows us once again that the biggest fossil fuel producers and exporters fare the worst in the index, and actually are the ones technically dropping in the index. And um, the biggest producers and exporters who have made significant efforts to improve across all the four categories assessed are the ones who have seen the best improvement in the index. So for example, Brazil has come up, uh, my colleagues have brought that up. Uh, Brazil has gone up 15 places in the ranking. Uh, and this is largely due to progressive climate policy. That was the main enabler. But however, uh, still, the place of Brazil is 23 in the index, and that is mainly because of a mix of approaches that involves fossil fuel uh, expansion, and actually a track that is quite dangerous into the fossil fuel pit hole. And uh, on implementation of policies, we see again countries like uh, the USA, we all know about the IRA uh, climate policy. However, again, the fossil fuel pit hole is the reason that um, the USA is not um, ranking one of the top of, in this index. Uh, we have countries such as Nigeria. This is a new entrant into the index. Also, again, here we see a mixed approach towards 2030 goals. It performs well on GHG emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, and energy use. But again, that fossil fuel um, activity level and low renewable energy sets Nigeria um, lower. And uh, also, there's the issue of inadequate climate finance for Nigeria and a lot of developing countries. A uh, country like China uh, has maintained the same position this year. Uh, despite growth uh, in the renewable energy sector and energy efficiency, again, same story. Reason is the high fossil fuel production and use. The UK, my colleagues have mentioned, um, again, has dropped in the index. Same story because of the fossil fuel uh, extraction. Morocco, which is a high performing country in this index and previously as well, um, has dropped, unfortunately, two places. Um, again, <laughs> because of the fossil fuel uh, accounting for majority of its energy uh, consumption. So, uh, looking at uh, other aspects such as uh, nuclear expansion, uh, we have uh, countries such as South Korea, uh, whose nuclear capacity have seen some additions and still the sticky issue of the planned uh, fossil fuel capacities, current and planned, further retrogresses a country like this uh, towards achieving 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, limit by 2030. So I think the story is obvious uh, from the CCPI this year and previously. So you see the highest ranking country, Denmark, that my colleagues have mentioned as well, um, Denmark is fourth place, not between first and third, 
the reasons have been mentioned by Ter, but the reason Denmark it comes forth is because of the high performance in greenhouse gas emissions and renewable energy. And it has a medium performance around uh, energy use and climate policy. But you see the mix of the four categories and how that comes into play and hence how Denmark uh, gets that first position in the index, but fourth technically. Um, so the CCPI also shows um, that there's a growth in momentum around renewables generally. Um, although uh, I think Nicholas had mentioned that you know it's barely as well we could do better, all countries could do better. And uh, there seems to be a general realization across countries, at least you know a minimal realization that uh, renewables are critical for energy security and economic advantages among other reasons. Um, we see a lowering of production and installation costs of renewables, a steady increase in policy support and in incentives. So again, as I started off, um, the, so the story of the CCPI is self-explanatory. Uh, these are just a few examples of countries and uh, the results are really reiterated across the index. So this is why the only acceptable energy package that we can get out of COP28 really is a phase out of all fossil fuels, full, fast, fair, funded, and forever, without any room for dangerous destructions. Abated fossil fuels and nuclear energy are dangerous destructions and do not represent the paradigm shift that we are calling for. There are ways of valuable finance, and um, waste of time that we do not have to achieve uh, the climate goals that we have ahead of us. And uh, they also do not finally and fully address the climate crisis that we have ahead of us. So any COP28 decision still featuring dangerous distractions would not be game changing in any way. So we urge uh, COP28, all the states, to focus their efforts and finance towards 100% renewable energy systems in a just, equitable, and rapid manner. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janet, and um, Jan and Niklas. Um, we will now have some time for questions. So if there is any press person who has a question to one of the panelists, please state your name and the media you are working for. So I see one here. Um, and one here. Do we have? A microphone there, please. Hi, I'm Joanne Tabasa from Telegraph India. Uh, just, you mentioned about the India's performance that renewable energy is the kind of driving point behind India's good performance. But renewable energy only covers the 20% of the score, whatever methodology I've seen. So India must have done well in other 80% as well. If you can elaborate on India's overall thing, what are the sector-wise thing, uh, and secondly is that I can also see that China is also doing very well on the solar. So how you compare India and China's position vis-a-vis -vis the CCPI? Maybe I start and Niklas, you, you add if, um, um, well, of course, um, I, I, I put out the renewable part because it's for a developing country like India, done better than other developing countries because sometimes it's easier to, do, to, to compare countries on the same year. No, India um, definitely profits most um, of the greenhouse gas uh, emissions category because here we see a very low level. Um, we, see a, we see a low, tra uh, so we see, uh, we see the, the only um, indicator which is rated here low is the trend, so the emissions are rising in India, but they are not as far rising as in other countries, like, like, like China, for example. Um, we see, uh, and India is profiting from, from that, for 40, it's the highest weight in the index from the greenhouse gas category. And, um, and the policy evaluation is also medium, but in the upper range of medium. So therefore, India gets here also some points. And as this is a relative ranking, India um, uh, has done a bit better. But again, uh, is, India is relying heavily on, on fossil fuels. Um, and if the, the increase of the emissions will, um, as fast as go up, then I would expect India to be rated lower in the next year. So the renewables must um, then in the end have an impact 
on the emissions. If not, India will, will, will not can help hold this place. Maybe on targets, Nicholas? Yeah, maybe one addition. I mean, just to compare the two countries, the per capita oh, yeah. emissions of India are basically half of the global average, so very low, while the per capita emissions of, of China are already above a world average and are actually higher than those of the EU. And uh, that is one of the indicators that is ranked a lot in, in the index, and that makes the two countries very different. But both countries have to do the same thing. Yeah? They have to expand renewables as fast as they can. I think India needs some help from other countries. Uh, but both needs to do that, and they need to stop uh, building coal-fired power plants. In both countries, uh, it's kind of uh, being tried to happen, but that is the big obstacle. And uh, the more the renewable energy is supported, uh, the better and the lower the emission growth will be. And hopefully at one point, uh, it will not grow anymore, but will go down. Thank you very much. I saw a question here, and maybe we can collect one further question here. Okay, then, please go ahead. It's Masato Kimura, Japanese freelance journalist based in London. Uh, Japan has received a Hosul Fuel Award uh, for today twice at COP28, and this ranking Japan in 58th place. And why Japanese uh, reputation is so low? Because of uh, climate policy and uh, uh, fuel dependency. Thank you. Jan, will you start again, or Niklas? I can start. So, um, all in all, um, the, the, the performance um, uh, of, uh, of Japan is very much related on, uh, when I start with the categories, um, the, the, the per capita emissions are quite high. Um, the, the trend, the emissions are not decreasing, or very little only, so Japan. Um, and if you, and if you, and Japan also, Japan also set very low targets in all the sectors, so we don't, we don't see a good targets in, in greenhouse gases, renewables, or in energy use. The, uh, the only high rating I, I have in Japan is on the trend on renewables. So Japan is starting to to um, to, to build new renewable power power, which is good. Um, but the the, um, the policy evaluation from our experts in Japan. Um, Shows uh, not a good foresight. They give for both uh, national, like internationally, very bad rates, and uh, we can. Um, yeah, so that's that's the when I go to the 14 indicators, that's the main message I would say here. And if Japan will continue the trend of uh, building up renewables against coal and the other sources, then there's a chance to go up, but it has to be much, much faster than in the past. Okay, are there any more questions? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, here. Hello, I'm from Taiwan, the Chinese Taipei. And Taiwan ranks is very low every year. I want to know what is the main reason, and do you have any suggestion to improve our performance? Thank you. Should I? Um, um, yeah, uh, Taiwan is an, is an interesting country. Um, until 20, 2017 or 2018, there was a straight line between GHD development and GH, uh, G, uh, GDP development and uh, and um, and GHD and emissions development. It was just one to one. Uh, we we saw that every new GDP was done with fossils. Now it has changed a bit. Um, so the emissions increased since 1990 quite a bit. Taiwan has around about uh, 13 tons per capita, which is um, four tons higher, for example, than China, or uh, t uh, 11 tons higher than, than than India. So it's just from the emissions level, uh, Taiwan um, uh, has a very high high emissions. Um, they now start to build up renewables. It's starting compared to other countries, as this is a relative exercise. This is not as fast as in others. 
I talk to a lot of Taiwanese colleagues and they say, well, it's difficult, more difficult than maybe in other countries. Um, but uh, if every country would say that, then we would go, can't go nowhere. So um, every country needs to, to ramp up and it's must, must, much, much faster than they did. Um, the policy evaluation, um, we see a bit better grades than last year, and also we see some, uh, some um, better targets. So Taiwan has increased the targets from 25 to 30% regarding renewables, which is good, but they know, as every country, needs to put money and real implementation measures behind. If not, um, we won't see that in the emissions and not uh, in the ranking. Do you have an addition, Janet? You want to say something? Um, not on Taiwan specifically, but generally on targets that uh, Jan has touched on. Um, for example, in Japan, um, we see that a concrete roadmap uh, for, for targets is quite key, and, and that is where some countries are also uh, losing out. So uh, targets that are uh, measurable are also very important and also uh, assist in improving the ranking of countries. Thanks. I saw another question here, and this could be the last one, depending on the question. <laughs> Four minutes left, so maybe one or two questions. Hi, uh, my name is Subel. I'm a journalist with uh, Radio Free Asia. Uh, my question is about Southeast Asia. How are how do they perform? Uh, specifically, big uh, countries, coal dependent countries like Indonesia. Um, and also, can I ask Dr. Nicholas to expand a little bit more on uh, the per capita uh, about China? Thank you. Nicholas, you want to start, and then we go to the southeast east question. Uh, exactly. So, um, I was explaining before that uh, the per capita emissions of China have risen uh, a lot in the last 20 years and are now above the world average and are even higher than those of the EU. And um, in this case, um, uh, well, in the EU, the per capita emissions have been declining significantly, and. Um, uh, that's now an interesting uh, comparison. Uh, one thing while I have the word, I think the, um, the targets uh, is, I think, something uh, very uh, important. We have seen, for example, on the renewable energy that a few countries have updated their renewable energy target. That's positive news. You know, countries like uh, Estonia or Portugal or, or Germany or Greece have updated their renewable targets to do more. That really shows that, well, there's really a lot of movement in renewables right now. And that uh, basically means that all countries can do more now because renewables have become so cheap. And that's why this initiative here of tripling renewable energy is so important, uh, that countries embrace it and really implement it at home. Just signing is not enough. Uh, you really need to implement it then at home. But countries can, and that is, I think, the hopeful message. You can. Okay, uh, let me elaborate a bit on Southeast Asia. I'm starting with, uh, with, with Thailand, uh, maybe. Um, Thailand profited this year very much from a, from a new data source. Uh, we have new, new dual CF emissions from Taiwan, which are much lower than uh, so the, Thai, the, the Thailand... Um, well, oh, I have one minute left. Okay, sorry. I need to rush a bit. We can talk also on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the countries afterwards. Uh, so Thailand uh, profits very much uh, from from lower emissions, uh, which are measured this year, has a relatively low per capita emissions. The policy evaluation is quite weak, actually, um, so, the, so it needs to be better. Malaysia, and um, Malaysia is ranked on uh, 59. The main problem is that uh, it's a country in the region with the highest per capita emissions and really not much renewables, uh, so this is, and the policy evaluation is also weak. Um, and maybe Indonesia is, of course, an interesting country, especially when it comes to coal and, and deforestation questions. Um, Indonesia is ranked on, let me check, uh, yeah, uh, has, has lost 10 ranks um, to 36, um, mainly due to increasing emissions and a worse policy evaluation. But Thank you can also find in the brochure and on the homepage, ccpi.org, country checks for every of these countries, which is explained where we have a bit more time, and you can read it out and then ask. Yeah, thank you very much. This is it for, 
from our side, and Jan already mentioned our website, ccpi.org, there you can find additional information, and we will be also outside the room for further questions, and thank you for your attention and um, for your um, listening. Thanks. Thank you.